Job says to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you inspect him in every morning and observe him in every moment. He tells Hashem, you inspect man every day, but not just every day on the whole day, every moment of the day. Every moment of the day you inspect him. Your brain, even if your IQ is slightly above a monkey, is still more sophisticated than all of the technology in the world combined. There's more wiring in your brain than all of the wiring from Verizon, AT&T, Qualcomm, Google, Apple, and everybody else combined in the world in every single one of your brains. Use it before you lose it. Use it simply before you take an action that's going to be too late. But as the Chafetz Chaim taught Rav Waslam and Allah Shalom almost a hundred years ago, every bullet has a name on it. The bullet is never going to hit anyone who doesn't deserve it, anyone that Hashem does not want it to happen. But you never ever think that it's an accident. Everything is directed by Kadosh Baruch Hu. It's not accidental that some crazy guy decided to go shoot him. Hashem directed it to happen that way. Apparently, for whatever reason, he wanted him to get shot. That guy wanted to shoot somebody, so he used him to shoot somebody. But he didn't want him to die, so he shot him, but he hurt him, but he didn't kill him. Why? That's Cheshbonot Shaman. Oral Torah in Tractate Bachot, page 32b, says Akadosh Baruch Hu told us exactly how many stars, not an estimate, but exactly the number of stars in the universe that He created just for us. 10 to the 18th power plus 64, 340, and then 12 zeros after it. Meaning that science took a couple of thousand years to arrive at a number that's extremely close to a number that we have that's a precise number. The Gemara was written almost 1,600 years ago. So we had this information well before telescopes existed, meaning that the only way we could have such a number would be that we got it from the one who put it there. So when you see this type of information exist in our Torah, you realize that it has to be divine. That makes fulfilling all of the mitzvot much, much easier. What happens if somebody's a Mizakeh Rabim, somebody helps people become religious, he has special protection. Why? He doesn't want the rabbi to be in Gehenom and the uh, students to be in Gan Eden. Because then the students are not going to enjoy their Gan Eden. They're going to enjoy their heaven. So what happens? So he gives special protection to that rabbi that helped him go into heaven. Meaning, it doesn't necessarily mean, literally mean a title of a rabbi. Meaning the person that helped him do tshuva. You are the one that collected that 500 or that 5,000 or the 500,000 dollars you collected and that money was used to help people become religious, that will give you special protection in heaven against certain tikkunim and different avirot and so on and so forth that you potentially will fall into. Why? Because Hashem does not want you to be punished when you've helped so many people get reward. Because punishing you would in essence be also punishing them. So He's going to give you special protection as a result of it. That is the biggest thing that a person can do in order to soften their judgment. The schal, the reward for getting a Jew to do tshuva, a Jewish woman or a Jewish man to do tshuva is enormous, whether that person is a Jew or a non-Jew that helped them. So everybody has to do uh, their own messirut nefesh, their own sacrifice, in order to, uh, to get, in essence, the, the ticket in 